God bless you, my brother Billy. Uh, my name is Pastor Tim Zapata. I pastor uh, Victory Christian Center here in uh, Seguin, Texas, uh, where Sister Jessica goes. Uh, I know you and her are in a relationship. Um, and I just wanted to make a video to uh, give you some encouraging words to encourage you. Um, don't know who you are, uh, but God does. And that's all that really matters. As long as God knows who you are, that's all that matters. And uh, I want to encourage you um, to keep on going forward. Uh, don't lose hope uh, in that situation you're in. Uh, I know that a lot of people can lose hope, uh, but I hope that you don't. I hope my prayer is that through this video uh, that you can get encouraged, uh, that it will lift up your faith. Uh, the Bible says that we all have a measure of faith. And my prayer is that when we get through with this video, that your faith is going to be increased. Um, don't know if you have ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But if you have it, uh, close so to the end of the video, I'm going to uh, introduce Jesus Christ to you. Um, and if you accept him, uh, God will help you um, along your journey that you're in right now. Uh, I pray that whatever situation, whatever circumstance you may be going through, um, that God would help you. The Bible says that all things work for good to them that love the Lord. So uh, if you love God, God can turn that situation you're in around. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, situation you find yourself in. It doesn't matter if it's sickness, disease, legal issues, uh, or even if you, as you are incarcerated, uh, I know that God can help you. Uh, before we even get started, uh, I wanna, I'm going to give you some scriptures <clears throat> and uh, so you can memorize this and you can just meditate on these scriptures that I give you. Uh, the number one scripture that I want to tell you about is found in John 3.16. And it's a very familiar scripture that says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him, and you are a whosoever. Uh, he says that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Um, so, I want you to believe in Jesus and believe that He can get you out of that situation you find yourself in. Um, he's got great things in store for you. He's got a plan for your life. I believe that everybody in this world is born uh, for a reason. There's a plan uh, for our life. There's a purpose why we are living. Uh, we might not know it yet. Or we might not know the, or we might not see the full picture yet, but um, know one thing that if you are alive, it's because God has something special for you. Uh, it doesn't matter what situation, like I said, what condition, what place you might find yourself in. Uh, you might think, well, you know, I I won't be any good in here. Yes, you are, and yes, you will. Uh, God knows all things, like I said. Uh, I want to give you another scripture that says Isaiah chapter uh, forty nine verse sixteen says that. Um, he has written uh, your name on the palm of his hand. And that's how much he loves you. He loves you so much, not only that he's going to, God is not only going to love you so much, or has not loved you so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, that you may have life and life more abundant. But also that he has written his name, your name, I'm sorry, he has written your name in the palm of his hand. He's written your name so that he can memorize it, so that every time he sees it, he can just, the Bible says that, that Jesus is continually praying for us. And sometimes when we don't know what to pray for, the Bible says that the spirit that is inside of us will pray for us. So know that he loves you and that you have been engraved in the palm of his hand. Uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I, I want to tell you right now that you have been called. God has called you. God has chosen you. God has picked you. And you might say, how can he do that? And look at the situation. Why would God allow me to be in this place, in this situation? Well, sometimes the decisions that we make in our life um, get us to the places where we're at. In the point in, in, in the place that you're in right now maybe there was bad decisions that you made when you were younger or 
you know, not too long ago, you made some bad choices and uh, have put you in the situation that you're in right now. But know one thing that when God comes in, He forgives you of all of your sins and everything that you have done, He has forgiven you. And He won't remember those things anymore. He has great things in store for you. And I want to let you know <clears throat> that Romans 8, 30, 37 says, Know that in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us, which is Jesus Christ. You are more than a conqueror. Right there in that place. My prayer is that when you listen to this video, that you would share some of these scriptures with other inmates there, with other people in there, that may be going through the same situation you're going, or probably even worse. Because I believe that one of these scriptures, one of these words can make a life-changing decision in a person's life, can change their life forever. And when you do that, God will be working on your behalf for whatever it is that you need. So my prayer is that you would share some of the scriptures with other people there around you. And that maybe you can lead them to the Lord just like I'm going to lead you later on to the Lord. <clears throat> so know that God is with you right there. And you might not see Him, but you can feel Him. Uh, I tell people uh, that say that, you know, there's no God or they don't believe that God is with them. I say to them, uh, do you believe that there's a wind? And your answer is probably going to say yes. And my question to you is, how do you know there's a wind if you can't see it? You can say, well, I feel it. I see it moving in trees. Well, same way you feel the wind, you see it moving in trees. I feel the Lord. And I can see Him moving in different people. And that's how I know that there's a God. Because not only does He, can I feel Him, but He has answered so many of my prayers. That He said, if I just ask Him, He would guide me in to different uh, 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 areas of my life. So <clears throat> I want to tell you right now, my brother, that uh, uh, God is doing some awesome things in your life right now. And, and you might not uh, know it, uh, but know that He's working on your behalf. And know that um, that he's gonna pull you through whatever situation uh, you, you're in right now know that God is right there with you and know that he's gonna help you out I want my, my, my prayer is that the faith that God has put in your life would just increase and grow and that when you come out of this place that you will get closer to God doesn't matter if it's here in Seguin or wherever it is, but that you would find a church that preaches the Word of God and that can help you and encourage you in the name of Jesus. So as we continue here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, it says like this. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. And it says, To cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you if you can just humble yourself before the Lord he said in due season the Bible says there's a season for everything in due season he said that he is going to exalt you in due time and then he goes on and says to cast all your cares, whatever problems, whatever situation you're facing. He says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you, for he loves you. So in that situation that you're in right now, that problem, that situation, whether it's legal, whatever it is, just put it in his hands and say, God, I put this care, this problem, my family, my uh, girlfriend, whatever it is, just say, God, I put them in your hands and I pray that you help me today and help them. And I guarantee you that he will do it. Another scripture that is in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says, 
The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. God is a strong tower. And the righteous, being righteous means being in right standing with God. So I want you to be in right standing with God. Meaning, I want you to ask God to forgive you for everything you've done, your sins. Uh, just ask God to forgive you, and, and He will. And everything, every bad thing, every bad decision, every sin that you committed, God said He will erase all of that, and He will make you a new creation, a new person. You will be born again. You might say, well, how can I be born again? I'm already born. Well, being born again, is, it, it means being dead to the old self, the old Billy. The Billy that used to do all these things. Maybe you used to drink. The old Billy that used to drink and cuss and, and, and do all these bad things. That Billy dies and a new Billy is born. A, a Billy that believes in God, trusts God, has faith in God. A, a Billy that is, that is trusting God to the fullest, saying, God, I don't care what comes my way. I'm going to trust you that you're going to help me. So in doing this, uh, Brother Billy, I want to tell you that, that God wants to help you in your situation that you find yourself in. Listen, the Word of God says that in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, says that you can do all things through Christ, Jesus Christ, who strengthens you. So right there, you might not feel strong. You might feel weak, doubt. I don't know. But know that God will strengthen you if you just trust Him and trust in the Lord. You know, whatever situation, whatever issues you have, if, if there's addictions that you might have, if there's problems, if, if you're feeling depressed or, or, or if you have trust issues, or whatever it is, say, God, can you help me today? Can you help me that I may be able to trust you, that I may be able to trust others, those who have hurt me, those who have talked about me? Help me to love them. Help me to forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. Just like right now, I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know what, you know, I know that you have forgiven me, Lord. Just say that to God. And God will help you in whatever addiction. He'll take all of that addiction away from you. That unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, if people hurt you. Maybe you have a hurt in your heart from somebody who hurt you. Somebody who did you wrong. Just ask God to forgive you. Just ask God to come in and heal your heart. So that you can be able to love. So that you can be able to share this love with somebody else that is in need. So, as you, you know, meditate on these words, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So, in everything that you do, Billy, give thanks to God. Thank Him. Say, God, I thank you because you are with me. God, I thank you because you helped me. God, I thank you because you gave me the strength to go forward. So in every, he says, in everything that you do, thank him. Thank him. Just, you say, God, I thank you because, you know, I might not know right now in the situation that I might find myself. I might not know the outcome right now. But whatever happens, I want to thank you because I know that your perfect will in my life it's going to come to pass. And, and, and know that, that he, wants, he wants the best for you. He does. Uh, I, I know that. You might say, how do you know that? I do. I know that God wants the best for you. So in the moment that you find yourself in right now, what I want you to do is just cry out to God. Cry out to God. What do you mean? Call upon him. Cry out. Say, Lord, if you're really out there, I want you to. Show me that you're here. I want you to, I want to feel you. And, and as you begin to, to do this, God's going to begin to do something in your life, Billy. 
right now as I'm speaking to you, as I'm speaking through this video, you're feeling, might be goosebumps or whatever, you might be feeling something inside or might be something's tugging in your heart. That's God. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you right now. Cry out loud to God. The Bible says in Psalms 3, verse 4, it says, I cried out to God. This is a, the, the psalmist, David, the one that wrote the book of Psalms. He said, I cried out to God and he answered me from his holy hill. He answered. When you call upon God, he will answer you. When you call upon the name of Jesus, he will answer you. The name of Jesus has a power, it, it's a powerful name. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every demon must flee, every tongue will confess, and every knee will bow. Will confess that He is Lord. So use the name of Jesus. It's a powerful name. The Bible says also in Psalms 34 verse 17, that when the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. So whatever trouble you find yourself in, call upon Him. Let God come into your life in that cell room that you're in. Let Him come in there. And let Him fill that place with His love and His mercy. You know what His mer mercy means? Mercy mean, means undeserved love. Meaning, we didn't deserve to be loved because of our ways, the way we lived. But God loved us anyways and He sent His Son Jesus to die just for you. He died for this whole world. But I believe that if Jesus would have to come back, that if you were the only person on this earth, that he will come back just for you because he loves you. So as you go <clears throat> throughout your days, Billy, remember these scriptures. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and I will hear you. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. It says, In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. I don't want you to know. So He says, and Acknowledge Him and He will make your way, your path straight. This is God. This is God. The Bible says to seek Him. In Isaiah chapter 55 or 6 says, Seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. He is near. He's close to you right now. He's close to you right now. Keep your head on high and begin to call upon God. Begin to call upon <clears throat> God wants to help you. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 25, it talks about a guy named Paul and Silas. <clears throat> Paul and Silas were persecuted, meaning they were beaten because they, were, they loved God, because they talked about God. And they got put into prison. They got put in prison and they were all beaten, beaten bad. And they put them in an inner cell, meaning right in the middle. That's where they put them. <clears throat> and the Bible says that when they were in there, they did not complain or anything. They, they didn't curse anybody. All they did is that they began to pray and sing praises unto God. And when they did that, they were back then in the old days, they would put chains on you. And, 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 and uh, you were bound. You weren't just in a cell, just there. You were bound. You were put, chains were all on your hands and your feet. So when Paul and Silas did this, the Bible says that immediately the chains that were on there were broken off of them. The chains that were on their feet were broken. Immediately, it says that the foundation of that jail cell was shaken and the, all the doors of that jail cell were open. So, you know, we don't know what God can do, but right there, if you just pray and call upon God, I know for a fact that He can come into that room. And maybe you don't have 
physical chains that have you bound. But maybe there's addictions that have you bound. Maybe there's old thoughts. Maybe the enemy messes with your mind a lot. That's a, 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 a chain that God can come in and break in your life. Maybe there's obstacles in your life. Maybe there's situations that are keeping you from coming to the Lord. But what I want to tell you today, Brother Billy, is to call upon God. Call upon Him right there where you're at. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21 says this, Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. God who is able to do exceeded and abundantly above all that we ask or even think, God will hear you and He will deliver you. And He's here and He's ready. So, I want to ask you today, my brother Billy, that if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that today is your day. If you want to receive Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then we're gonna have we're gonna do a prayer, and I'm gonna ask you to repeat this prayer with me. In order for you to get to heaven, or for you to go into heaven, you have to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. You don't get to go into heaven by being good or by giving money to the church. Being good is something that we need to be, but it doesn't get you into heaven. Giving money to the church, offering, tithe, that's something that we're supposed to do, but that doesn't get, get us into heaven. What gets us into heaven is accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The Bible says that there's two ways. There's heaven and there's hell. Hell is as real as heaven is. And the people that don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior cannot get into heaven. There's only another place for them, which the Bible calls hell. There's eternal life and there's eternal death, eternal suffering. And that happens in hell. So, Billy, <clears throat> if you have never asked Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now to accept them. And if you say, yes, I'm tired of living the life that I'm living. I'm tired of living this life that has not gotten me anywhere. I want to change in my life. If you say these words, then you're ready to receive Jesus Christ. And I will gladly, gladly introduce you to Jesus Christ. I will lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. <clears throat> All you have to do is repeat this prayer with me. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Lord, I come to you as humbly as I know how to ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me of everything that I've done. Forgive me if I've hurt you, Lord. Those were not my intentions. Forgive all of my sins. And I ask you, Lord, to hear my prayer, which I know that you have. Come into my heart, come into my mind, Clear my mind, heal me, deliver me, and set me free. Change my mind, change my heart. I give you my life, my mind, my heart, my soul belongs to you, Lord. God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. He died a horrible death just for me. But he did not stay dead, Lord. He rose again on the third day. And the Bible says that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's praying for me. So Jesus, I pray that you will receive me as your son today. 
and I thank you. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Now I pray that you will lead me and guide me every day of my life. When I wake up, be with me. When I go throughout my day, be with me. When I lay down to go to sleep, be with me. Protect me and guide me. And help me to share you with other inmates or other people around me. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen and amen. Well, Billy, if you pray this prayer with all of your heart, congratulations. Welcome to the family of the Lord. I pray, I'm going to pray for you right now. God, I thank you for giving my brother Billy an opportunity to receive you. I thank you for giving me this opportunity, Lord, to share these scriptures and this word with my brother Billy. And my prayer, God, is that you would change his heart, his mind, that he, Father God, would serve you to the best of his ability, that you would protect him right there where he's at, that you would fill that cell with your love, with your anointing, with your spirit, that, Father, that he would know your word and know you in a different way. Father, protect them and guide them. Lord, let no harm come his way in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I don't know how long he's going to be in there, but God, I know that you can turn things around. I know that you can get them out quickly. And we pray that it be done in your time, Lord, when you know that it's his time for him to come out of that place. You're going to do it, Lord. So I pray to you right now, Father God, that you would help my brother Billy in his everyday walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my brother Billy, thank you for allowing me to speak into your life. I pray that one day we get to, I get to meet you. And my prayer is that if I don't see you here, and if you stay faithful to God, and I stay faithful to God, we will see each other in heaven with Jesus one day. Thank you for, so much for allowing me to speak into your life. Thank you for everything. And I pray that you take these scriptures and put them to work in your life. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Be blessed. Have faith in God.